Now, from WYDC-TV, this is Big Fox News at 10. Good evening, I'm Anna Manuel. Corning Painted Post students could see some changes coming to the school dress code. Our Maggie Hall has details on those potential changes and what this would mean for students. The overhauled dress code can be found in Section 5 of the revised code of conduct that the school district is proposing. The intro into Section 5 reads, The Corning Painted Post School District has established one student dress code to foster equity and ensure consistent enforcement in all schools. Our dress code is written in such a manner that does not reinforce stereotypes and is meant to minimize reasons for conflict. The document goes on to state that no person's attire is responsible for any other person's ability to maintain focus and that the focus should be on education. The changes include students being allowed to wear hats and other head coverings. Previously, any student wearing a hat would be told to take it off by a faculty member. Under the proposed changes, students would now be able to wear crop tops and spaghetti strap tank tops. The district is asking for public commentary on the changes. A full copy of the proposed revised code of conduct can be obtained from the district's clerk. A public comment forum will be held during the Board of Education meeting on June 21st. Overall, the proposed revisions to the dress code appear to be intended to give students more freedom of expression in the way they dress with a continued focus on their education. Maggie Hall, Big Fox News, Corning. A third man arrested in connection to swastika stickers and hate speech pamphlets that appeared in local churches in Hornell. 28-year-old Ryan Mulholland has been charged with 10 counts of first-degree aggravated harassment and nine counts of criminal mischief as a hate crime. Aubrey Dragonetti and Dylan Henry have also been found guilty in these incidents. Steuben County residents invited to speak their minds at this week's public input sessions. Those sessions are tomorrow and Thursday from 2 to 6. Tuesday's session will be hosted by the Southeast Steuben County Library and the Community Arts Center in Hornell. Thursday's sessions hosted at the Wayland Free Library and the Steuben County Annex in Bath. The county is asking for the public's feedback on the Steuben County Comprehensive Plan, which is a 15 to 20 year plan. Residents are asked to provide feedback on a variety of issues concerning the plan from agriculture to tourism. You can check out the county's plan on their website. The Corning Rotary is holding its first ever online auction. Items being auctioned off include stays at local hotels, wine from the Finger Lakes, local restaurant gift cards, and more. All items being auctioned were donated by local businesses. The money raised from the fundraiser will go to the projects that the club creates in the community. To check out the items and make your bid, you can go to the website on your screen. An investigation underway after a fatal plane crash in Virginia. That plane was in restricted airspace before being intercepted by F-16 fighter jets, causing a sonic boom around the nation's capital. Lauren Blanchard has more. Federal investigators tasked with probing Sunday's plane crash killing all four on board still haven't identified the cause. But in a statement, the National Transportation Safety Board said they will begin the process of documenting the scene and examining the aircraft Monday morning. That plane hit going awfully fast. So, I mean, there's not going to be a lot of uh, debris out there that you're going to be able to piece together. But, you know, NTSB has done this a lot of times, and I'm always surprised that they're able to put all this back together. This home security video captured the sonic boom that thundered Sunday afternoon as six U.S. fighter jets scrambled to intercept the private plane over Washington's restricted airspace. The FAA says the Cessna citation took off from Elizabethtown, Tennessee, and was headed for Long Island's MacArthur Airport when it turned around and flew a straight path over D.C. before crashing over mountainous terrain near Montebello, Virginia. This has the signatures of some sort of incapacitation. Sunday's crash echoes the 1999 death of golfer Payne Stewart, whose Learjet flew for thousands of miles before crashing into fields after the cabin lost pressure and flew aimlessly across the country with the pro golfer on board. We'll know when, when the pilots turn in their debrief what they saw, whether the there are signs that it was a decompression and the interior cockpit is frosted over. The military says it chose not to shoot down the Cessna because it was maintaining a constant high altitude and route, meaning it wasn't clear if it was a threat. In Washington, Lauren Blanchard, Fox News.
The field of Republican presidential candidates is expanding, with two more names joining the list of those running for president. And as the race intensifies, candidates making a crucial stop in Iowa over the weekend. CB Cotton reports. The road to 2024, it runs through Iowa. Eight declared and undeclared presidential candidates introduced themselves to Republican voters in Iowa on Saturday, part of Senator Joni Ernst roast and ride, all making their case for why their vision is the best to win the party's nomination and eventually win back the White House. It's time for a new generation leader. We've got to leave the baggage and the negativity behind. I scare the dickens out of the radical left. I know how to fight battles, and let me tell you, we have a battle fight in 2024. Let me fight that good fight for you. During their speeches, the candidates criticized the Biden administration's policies, spoke about the southern border, Washington spending, and barring transgender athletes from women's sports. Trump was the only candidate not at the event, but that didn't stop Florida Governor Ron DeSantis from continuing his criticism of the former president. There is no substitute for victory. We need to dispense with the culture of losing that has beset the Republican Party in recent years. Former Vice President Mike Pence took a ride himself Saturday, gearing up for his presidential announcement, which will come on Wednesday in Iowa, according to the Associated Press. The contrast to the Democrats' agenda of decline and decay, Republicans have to offer a positive vision of the future grounded in confident conservative principles. Former New Jersey Governor Chris Christie is also expected to announce his run for president this week, and multiple reports have North Dakota Governor Doug Burgum entering the race as well. In New York, C.B. Cotton, Fox News. A Republican floated as a potential 2024 candidate says he will not enter the race. New Hampshire Governor Chris Sununu has passed on joining the crowded GOP 2024 presidential field. Sununu said a combination of the large number of candidates and former President Trump's strong polling numbers played a role in his decision. Walmart is making some changes in order to go a little easy on the environment. Walmart says it will now use paper mailers that can be recycled instead of plastic ones. It will also use right-sized packaging technology at about 50% of its fulfillment centers. The company says it will also let customers bypass plastic bags when they pick up orders curbside. We have your complete work week forecast next. Plus, the summer is expected to be the busiest travel season in nearly three years. How airlines are preparing to make sure you get to your destination with no delays. Stay with us. Now, your Twin Tiers forecast from Big Fox. Good evening. As we work our way into our first full week of June, taking a look at the start of the month, we had those 90s building their way into our forecast. Our 93 was our official high on that Friday. And then into the weekend, we saw a shift in those temperatures, bringing us more comfortable conditions and still on the quieter side. However, a more messy forecast here is going to be taking over as we step into this work week. One of those concerns is going to be with the air quality. We know that as we stepped into our Monday, it almost looks like an overcast day, but this is actually wildfire smoke from wildfires that are burning across portions of eastern Canada, and that smoke is dropping its way across portions of the state. We see that rolling even into our Tuesday and Wednesday, several plumes of that smoke, not only just working its way through our upper atmosphere, but is working its way down to those surface levels, which is creating some air quality concerns. So air quality alert has been extended into that Tuesday forecast, so especially if you are sensitive uh, to this haze, the smoke, of respiratory issues, limit that outdoor time, keep windows and doors closed through this time frame, especially if you are a sensitive group as those air quality is going to definitely decrease at times throughout the day still. Now we're going to note that what's going to continue to be pushing the smoke down into the atmosphere is these short waves that's coming off a low pressure system that is hugging near Maine. And that's what's also going to start to initiate some active weather with some shower. Now most of that here for the early portion of the week is holding off towards the east, but it is going to gradually grow into the area, which is also going to give us that stronger northerly flow, which will bring cooler temperatures and then daily rain chances into our weekend forecast. So first setting up rolling through our Tuesday, we generally still have brighter skies across the local area. Again, you can see that moisture mainly hugging the eastern portion of the state. A few sporadic showers there found for the local area, but it is fairly minimal. So we'll keep it of a mention that we'll have chances Tuesday and Wednesday, but it is going to be a bit more restricted by the 
end of the week, we could have some better widespread availability for the region. So you will see that battle between some of that hazy sunshine there popping up way in through the Elmira area to still even seeing a few of those thunder uh, icons popping up. But generally, what we're noting is that we have fallen more into a seasonable temperature trend. The restriction of that smoke warming up the surface and then this low working in gradually bringing us cooler air is what's going to keep us seasonal or even cooler than average at times is when we head even into our Wednesday, we start to feel that northerly flow take place. So we'll see some sunshine, but we'll talk about maybe a few stray showers possible on that Wednesday forecast. We'll continue that coverage into the end of the week where temperatures stay near or below average. Our warmer trend that's going to see a quick turnaround will be Saturday. That's looking to be the better of the dry days of the week. Still have to watch for some of that haze and smoke, but as we turn around back to those 80s, it will be short lived as it seems like this low pressure system will continue to keep us under roller coaster conditions into next week.